Mystery. Hey, Huckle, oh. what's the time? Oops, was I shouting? <laughs> it's one o'clock, Lily. One o'clock? Our pizza was supposed to be here an hour ago. Pepino sure is slow today. Well, since Pepino doesn't seem to be coming to us, maybe we should go to Pepino's. Good idea. Yes, let's find out what's taking him so long. Hi, guys. Howdy, guys. Oh, hi. Hello. What's the matter, Pig Will and Pig Won't? You look kind of glum. We were happy when we got here, but we've been waiting so long to order pizza, we're too hungry to smile now. This is very strange. Where is Pepino? Hmm, he's not here at the pizzeria, and he never delivered our pizza. So where on earth is he? That is a good question. In fact, I would say it's... a mystery! <laughs> Goldbug here, reporting live from Pepino's Pizzeria, the speediest pizza place in town. But not today. That's right, Goldbug. No one knows where Pepino went, and without Pepino, there's no pizza. So we are going to find Pepino and find our pizza. Right, team? Right, right. Hegel. You bet. I hope so. Ready for it? Here goes! What? This is a pizza problem. Can Huckle and his team find Peppino and solve the delayed delivery mystery? Stay tuned and find out. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. Goldbug at... How do we start solving this mystery, Huckle? Well, let's see what clues we have to work with. We know that Peppino took my pizza order over the phone. <laughs> There's no pizza in the oven now, but the oven still feels warm. So I think he must have made the pizza. And look outside. Pepino's car isn't parked outside, so he probably left to deliver our pizza. Good point, Sally. Oh, look here. A customer list. And you're the last one on it, Huckle. That's a great clue, Loli. These must be customers who ordered pizza today. Bruno Bear, Mr. Sousa, and me. I wonder if Pepino delivered pizza to Bruno Bear and Mr. Souza. That's what we need to find out next. Come on, team. Let's get busy town. It could take hours for them to find Pepino. And it's already way past our lunchtime. What are we going to do? Hey, we could make our own pizza. How hard can it be? That's a great idea. We'll call it the Will and Won't Double Deluxe Extreme Supreme Pizza. <laughs> I love it. Yay! Let's get if Bruno got his pizza, we'll know that Pepino made it to the first stop on his delivery route. Hi, Hi. Bruno. Hello, 
there, Bruno. Hi, kids. What can I do for you? Actually, we had a question, but you've already answered it. I have? Yes. We see you're eating pizza. So I'm guessing that Pepino has already been here, right? Yep, he was here quite a while ago. I got the prime party pizza, 30 slices. Would you like some? No, thanks. We're busy solving a mystery right now. Well, good luck then. Thanks. Bye. Well, so far we know that Bruno is a big eater. <laughs> and that Pepino got this far on his delivery route. The next customer on his delivery list is Mr. Sousa. But first, there's a telephone booth, Huckle. Maybe you should call the pizzeria in case Pepino's there now. Good idea, Sally. Whoa! <laughs> wow! <laughs> hey, if we're going to make a pizza, we might as well make the biggest one ever. Right, Big Mom? You said it, Pig Will. Let's go for the world's record. Uh-oh, time out. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, Pig Won't. Did Pepino come back yet? Nope. No one's here except Pig Will and me. No problem. See you later, Huckle. Okay, Pig Will, back to our pizza. It's time for the tomato sauce. Nope. No Pepino. Let's keep looking. To Mr. Mr. Sousa's. As long as we're here at Mr. Sousa's, maybe I should get a tuba lesson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is this elevator working? Huh, the button isn't lighting up. Last one up the stairs is a sour pickle pizza. Hey, wait for us. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Souza. Oh, good afternoon. Why are you so tuckered out? The elevator wasn't working, so we took the stairs. Really? Hmm, it was working fine this morning when I got here. Did Pepino deliver a pizza to you? No. I ordered one a while ago, but he never showed up. And for some strange reason, neither did Hilda. And she never misses a tuba lesson. Hmm. That is odd. Hilda's always on time. And so is Pepino. Right. So after Pepino left Bruno's, something must have happened that stopped him from delivering the pizza to Mr. Sousa. Hmm. Let's go back outside and look for more clues. Bye for now. I smell pizza. Hey, so do I. Maybe Pepino delivered the pizza to the wrong office. Let's check that office. Ah! Oops, this isn't an office. It's the janitor's storage room. Hey, that sounds like a tuba. Hilda must be here now. Should we ask her if she's seen Pepino? Sure, you never know. She might have a clue for us. A repairman's on the way? Great, thanks so much. Bye. Huh? No, Hilda. Gee, first we're smelling things, and now we're hearing things. Hmm, very odd. Well, let's go back outside and search for more clues. Hey, look, there's Pepino's car. We must have walked right past it before. And there's Hilda's car. You're right. So it looks like they both arrived here, but somehow disappeared on their way to Mr. Sousa's floor. It's a good thing we didn't disappear on the way to Mr. Sousa's, or there wouldn't be anyone to solve this mystery. There are only two ways to Mr. Sousa's office, the stairs and the elevator. Since the elevator isn't working, they must have taken the stairs, just like we did. But we didn't see anyone on the stairs. That's right. So that just leaves the broken elevator. Wait a minute. Didn't Mr. Sousa say the elevator was working when he got here? Yeah, but it's not working now. Right. So the elevator broke down at some point. Hmm. I think I may have solved the mystery. Mamma mia! Did you find out what happened to Papino and your pizza, Huckle? Yep. Here's what I think happened, Goldbug. We went to the pizzeria and figured out that Pepino had made pizzas and went to deliver them. He made it to his first stop, Bruno Bear's, but never made it to his next stop, Mr. Sousa's. We saw Pepino's car and Hilda's car parked outside, so we knew that they had both arrived at Mr. Sousa's building, but never made it to his music room. We didn't see Pepino on the stairs, and we figured he didn't take the elevator because the elevator was broken. Then I remembered that Mr. Sousa said the elevator wasn't always broken. So I figured that it broke down just after Pepino and Hilda got on it. 
Are you saying that Peppino and Hilda are stuck on the elevator right now? I think so. And I think it was Hilda playing her tuba in the elevator that we heard. Hi. Are you here to fix the elevator? Yep. Mr. Sousa called to say it wasn't working. That's right. And you need to get it fixed fast because there are people in the elevator right now. Oh, dear. Yep. Looks like the problem was a loose wire. Let's see if it works now. And let's see if our mystery is solved. Hey, you found us! Hey! Hi, guys! That must have been awful to be stuck on that broken elevator. Not when you have some good music to listen to. And some good pizza to eat. I guess that solves that mystery. You said it, Echo. Yeah! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Echo. You can solve one, two. Huckle and his team have delivered the goods and solved the delayed delivery mystery. This is Goldbug signing off. Oh, dear. I'm afraid we ate the pizza that was for Mr. Sousa. Mr. Sousa? I almost forgot. Sorry, guys. Gotta go. I'm really late for my tuba lesson. You can give Mr. Sousa our pizza, Peppino. Sure. Just make us another one when you get back to the pizzeria. You kids are the best. Thank you. Let's head back to the pizzeria and tell Big Will and Big Won't the news. Right. They must be getting really bored waiting for Peppino. <gasps> what? Yikes. What happened? Uh, we were trying to make the biggest pizza ever. Yeah. The Will and Won't Double Deluxe Extreme Supreme Pizza. Looks like you ended up with the Will and Won't Double Trouble Disaster Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the Busy Town Fairies Mystery. If you think that was a big bubble, watch this, Sally. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Way to go, Louie! That was great! Thanks! I sure like making bubbles! But I sure don't like how they taste. the best ever acrobat show. <laughs> you can bet we won't miss it. Huckle, Sally, Loli, guess what? Hi, Hilda, what's up? You're not going to believe what I saw in the woods this morning. Fairies! Real, live fairies! Fairies? You're right, Hilda. We're not going to believe it. But it's true. I saw them, Loli. Really. They were flipping and flying through the air, all glittery and golden. <laughs> But, Hilda, you know fairies are only in fairy tales. They're not real. Really. <laughs> but believe me, I did see them. <laughs> oh, I believe you saw something, Hilda. But I'm sure it wasn't fairies. Well, I have proof, Loli. Look! Fairy dust! I found it right where I saw the fairies. What do you think, Huckle? Could there really be fairies in the woods? Well, Sally, the only thing I could say for sure is... This is... A mystery! Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here with a news flash. Huckle has just come across a glittering new mystery. What can you tell us about it, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, Hilda thinks she saw fairies in the woods, so we're going to find out if she really did and solve the busy town fairies mystery. Get ready for it. Here goes! What, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery!
And that's the buzz in Fizzy Town. Stay tuned for important updates as Huckle sets out to find the fairies. Goldbug out! We heard you have real fairy dust. Can we borrow some, please? Sure. <laughs> Pig will, Pig won't. What are you two doing? <laughs> Don't you know? Fairy dust is what makes fairies fly. So now that we've got some on us, we can fly too. Just watch. <laughs> It doesn't look like it's working. We just didn't put enough on us. That's right. We need more fairy dust. Where can we find some? In the woods. Come on, I'll show you. Uh, whatever it is, it's not fairy dust. <laughs> over here. I saw the fairies right over here. I don't see anything. Either the fairies flew away or there weren't any fairies in the first place. Fairies. <laughs> Catch you, fairy! Hey, you're not a fairy! Neither are you! <laughs> Sorry, guys, but I think that's about as close as you'll ever come to catching a real fairy because... Fairies are not real. What's the matter, Loli? Did you hear something? I... I thought I did, but it was probably just the wind. Well, I think we should split up. Let's see if we can find anything that might help us figure out if it really was fairies that Hilda saw. I'm going to find more fairy dust and fly above the trees. And I'll find even more fairy dust than you and fly up to the clouds. And I'll find a lot more fairy dust than you and fly to the moon. <laughs> you can't do that. How are you going to breathe, silly? There's no air on the moon. Well, then I'll hold my breath. Well, I can hold my breath longer than you can. <laughs> Lonely. I told you, there are no fairies. That fairy even sounds like Loli. That's because it is Loli. Look, more fairy dust. More fairy dust? <laughs> <laughs> I told you that's not fairy dust because there are no fairies in the woods. Yeah, well, you'll see. Once we find enough fairy dust, we're going to fly south for the winter. We'll send everybody a postcard. <laughs> Look, I'm flying! I'm flying! I must have used up all my fairy dust. Oh, he looked just like the fairies I saw this morning. But you looked like you were bouncing more than flying, Pigwill. Look, a little trampoline. That must be what Pigwill was bouncing on. He must have slipped on this tiny ball and fallen onto the trampoline. But why would there be a trampoline and a tiny ball in the woods? They're not exactly fairy things. Beats me, Sally. But there is something familiar about them. Huh? Did you see something, Lily? Huh. It must have been the wind again. Let's keep looking for more clues. Hilda's right. There are fairy 
trees in the woods. You saw them too? Well, no, not exactly, but I heard them laughing and they took my hat. Then what's that on your head? They gave it back. <laughs> if those aren't fairies, I don't know what they are. I don't know either, but for some reason, that laughing sounds familiar too. Is this a clue, Huckle? No, it's just the paper the best ever acrobats gave me for their show. It must have fallen out of my pocket. Why does that laughter sound so familiar? Where have I heard it before? What color was the glitter that you saw on the fairies? Gold. Just like what I have here. Aha! I think I know what Hilda really saw in the woods this morning. So, Huckle, I'll bet you have something very interesting to tell us. Have you solved the Busy Town Fairies mystery? I think so, Goldbug. Here's what I think happened. Hilda told us she thought she saw fairies in the woods, which made Loli and the best ever acrobats laugh. But instead of finding fairies in the woods, we found a trampoline and a tiny ball. I thought I had seen those things somewhere before. And then we heard laughing in the bushes, which sounded familiar, too. It was only when Hilda found the paper I dropped for the best ever acrobat show that I finally figured it out. The small trampoline and the tiny ball looked exactly like the ones on the poster. And the glitter on the acrobats' costumes was the same color as the glitter Hilda found. Which means Hilda didn't see fairies. What she really saw was the best ever acrobats. <laughs> Huckle's right. It must have been the acrobats that I saw. And all this time they were teasing us, hiding in the bushes, laughing, <laughs> and taking my hat. <laughs> <laughs> So that wraps up another Busy Town mystery. Goldbug out. Isn't flying the best? You bet. Even if we don't have fairy dust to make us fly, we can always pretend. And that's even better because <laughs> I don't like heights. Neither do I. Flying on the ground is much better. Now, which way is south? This way, I think. <laughs> the Mystery of the Lost Bag Boy, I sure hope Loli gets here soon. I'm getting hungry. Me too, Uncle. I wonder where he could be. <laughs> Here I am, up here. Hold the mustard, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> nice trick, Loli. <laughs> nice bag, Huckle. What's in it? Hey, where did that come from? It's not my bag, Loli. Someone must have lost it. Maybe there's something inside that will let us know who it belongs to. A coin? A map? Eyeglass case, a perfume bottle, and a red scarf. No name anywhere? Nope. So what do you think, Huckle? Well, I think we have a bag that belongs to someone, but we don't know who. So that means we have a mystery! Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here, reporting live for Busy Town Action News. Sounds like you have a bag full of mystery this time, Huckle. You bet, Goldbug. And we're going to solve the mystery of the lost bag by figuring out who the owner is and returning it to them. Are you ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Buzz 
in busy town. Golf bug at... Something in the bag must be able to give us a clue who the owner is. Hey, look at this coin. What about it, Sally? It's different. Look. Here's what a busy town coin looks like. And here's the coin from the bag. That money doesn't look like it's from busy town. That might mean that whoever the bag belongs to isn't from busy town either. You mean a visitor? Maybe. Let's see if anything else in the bag would belong to a visitor. What about the map? A map of busy town. A visitor would need a map to get around. Right. So we know that the owner of the bag isn't from busy town, but someone who is here visiting. Look, Huckle, there's a mark on the map. It's right on the busy town opera house. So that must be a place the visitor wanted to go. So I think that the owner of the bag came to busy town to see a concert at the opera house. Which means that's where we need to go to find them. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Hold everything! We're going to help solve the mystery! We're really good at finding things. I found Pig Won't once when he was lost. But I was with you. You were lost too. But I still found you. And I found you! See? We're really good at finding things. We'll help find who lost the bag. <laughs> okay, guys, let's go. We're heading to the Busy Town Opera House. It's my turn to drive. No, it's my turn to drive. It's my turn to drive. No, it's my turn to drive. I can't see. It's your turn to drive. No, it's your turn. Either. It's my turn to drive. No, my turn. The owner of the bag is in there somewhere. Let's go inside and find who it is. This is a big day in busy town for opera lovers. The world-famous opera superstar, Allegra Non Troppo, has come all the way to Busytown to sing for the very first time. Whoa! <gasps> the place is packed. Even a sardine would be squished in here. How are we ever going to figure out who owns the lost bag? Just leave it to us. I only have one question. How are we going to figure out who owns the lost bag? I don't know. That's the same question I was going to ask you. We think whoever owns the lost bag is here in the opera hall. We just have to figure out who it is. Let's check what else is in the bag that might help us. This is a perfume bottle, and ladies wear perfume, right? That's right, Sally. So that means the owner of the bag is a lady. A lady who is wearing that kind of perfume. Right. So if we sniff out all the ladies who are here, the one who smells like the perfume will be the owner of the lost bag. I've got a very good sniffer. Good plan, Sally. <clears throat> Sorry, but my sniffer's just a teensy bit better than yours. <laughs> That's because you gave me a cold. But you gave it to me first. <clears throat> okay, okay. We'll sniff her out now. We're, We're very good at finding things. Think they can do it? Well... One time they sniffed at a cake crumb from three blocks away. <laughs> now those are what I call amazing sniffers. While they do that, we should see what else is left in the bag that might give us a clue. Well, this eyeglass case tells us whoever the bag belongs to wears glasses. It's empty, which means that whoever owns it is probably wearing her glasses right now. Something tells me this isn't going to be so easy. There are a lot of ladies wearing glasses. It could be any of them. I smell it! I smell it! It's you! The only one here that smells like the perfume is him! That's because you each sprayed yourselves with the perfume. Well, at least we do smell nice. Yes, we do. But I smell a teensy bit nicer than you. 
I don't get it. The perfume belongs to the lady who owns the bag. But how come no one here smells like the perfume? Hmm. Maybe the lady who owns the bag isn't here. But she has to be here, Huckle. All the clues point to it. But if someone came to Busy Town to see Allegra and Antropo sing, there should be a ticket to the show in the bag, right? Right. right. But there isn't one. That's strange. Who comes to see a show without a ticket? Beats me, Loli. Is there anything left in the bag that might help us identify her, Sally? Only this red scarf. Maybe the lady who owns it likes to wear things that are red. Okay, so that means the lady we're looking for is visiting Busy Town to hear Allegra and Antropo sing, is wearing glasses, and likes to wear things that are red. Can we see anyone here like that? Some ladies are wearing glasses, but not wearing anything red. Some ladies are wearing something red, but not wearing glasses. But none of the ladies are wearing both glasses and something red. You know, I think I've seen that red scarf somewhere before. Where, Huckle? I don't know, Loli. Let me think. Wait! I think I know who owns the lost bag. So, Huckle, have you solved the mystery of the lost bag? I think so, Goldbug. I think the bag belongs to a lady who came to Busy Town for the opera, but not to watch it. Huh? Here's what I think happened. We found the bag and used the coin and the map to decide the owner of the bag was visiting Busy Town to go to the opera. We knew a lady owned the bag because of the perfume we found, and that she wore glasses, and that she liked wearing things that were red. But no one at the opera house fit that description. And it was also strange that there wasn't a ticket for the show in the bag either, which made us wonder who would come to a show from out of town without a ticket. Then I remembered seeing a red scarf somewhere else, on the poster of Allegra non Tropo. Allegra wears glasses, likes red scarves, and is visiting Busy Town for the opera. And since she is the one who is singing in the show, she doesn't need a ticket. I think the lost bag belongs to Allegra non Tropo. And the reason we couldn't find her here is because she's probably in her dressing room right now getting ready for the show. But how can we know for sure? Let's go ask her. I can smell the perfume. And I can smell it better than you. My bag. Oh, you found it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And my favorite red scarf. I am so happy to have it back. Huckle was right. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! So there you have it, folks. Huckle has solved another busy town mystery. And just before showtime, Goldbug and... <laughs> You are all invited to be my guests and hear me sing, of course. But I want to give you something special. A reward for finding my bag. Anything you want, just name it. That's a pretty cool hat you're wearing. Really cool. Sorry, but my horn is just a teensy bit bigger than yours. No, 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 my. no, 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 my. no, my. The Flat Tire Mystery. Hi, Sneakers. Hi, guys. What's the matter, Sneakers? My bike just got a flat tire, Huckle, and I don't have a pump. No pump, no problem. I'll have it inflated in a jiffy. Ta-da! Oops, I guess I ta da too soon. See what the problem is? There's a hole in your tire, Sneakers. Something must have punctured it. That's why the air you put into the tire leaked out again, Loli. That 
that's okay. We can just go down the road to bike shop Bob. He'll patch your tire for you, sneakers. Good idea, Sally. Flat tires. What happened, Bike Shop Bob? All these bike riders got flat tires today. And I can't find anything stuck in any of the tires that might have punctured them. Well, if you ask me, I'd say this is... a mystery! This is Goldbug reporting live for Busy Town Action News. What's this about a mystery, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, something punctured all these tires today, but no one knows what. So we're going to solve this mystery and figure out how the tires got flat. Ready for it? Here goes! What? Why? How? Who? What? When? Where? Why? Say how? Who? Why? How? Who? What? When? Where? Why? How? Everybody! Who? What? When? Where? Why? How? Solve a mystery! It looks like Huckle and his team are all pumped up to solve the flat tire mystery. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. Where should we begin, Huckle? Well, let's see. Bike Shop Bob, did anyone mention where their tires went flat? Yes. In fact, everyone told me they got flat tires right after they crossed Busy Town Bridge. Well, then there must be something sharp on Busy Town Bridge that's puncturing all the tires. Come on, team. Let's go have a look. Whoa, look at all the big trucks and stuff. Yeah, and they've closed it off so we can't drive straight through to Busy Town Bridge. No problem. We'll just drive around the block to get to the bridge. Here we are at Busy Town Bridge. Now, how are we going to find out what's causing all the flat tires? Easy. I'll just drive my car across the bridge and back again. But what if you get a flat tire? Then we'll know for sure that whatever's causing the flat tires is on the bridge. So far, no flats. Now I'll drive back on the other side of the road. So, did I get a flat tire? Nope. No flat tires. Hmm. That's odd. If something on the bridge was causing tires to go flat, then my car tire should have gone flat. Actually, come to think of it, no car tires in Busy Town have gone flat, have they? We've seen lots and lots of bicycles with flat tires, but no cars or trucks with flat tires. I wonder why only bikes are getting flat tires. <laughs> There's Big Will and Big Hoot. Let's see if their bicycle gets a flat tire when they cross the bridge. Hi, Pig Will and Pig Wall. <laughs> Hi, guys. Oh, what are you looking at? We're checking to see if your tires are going flat. <laughs> They're not going flat. Lots of other bicycles that cross that bridge got flat tires. Well, not us. Hmm. I didn't get a flat tire, and neither did Pig Will and Pig Won't. So now we know that whatever's causing the flat tires isn't on the bridge. Then where could it be? We're solving a mystery. Oh, we're going to Bike Shop Bob's to buy a bell for our bike. A bell? Don't you mean a horn? Horns are the best for getting someone's attention. Hawk, 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 hawk! Uh-uh. Bells are better, Pig Won't. Dring, dring! Hawk, hawk, dring, hawk, dring! Hawk, hawk, dring, hawk, dring! Hawk, What's all that noise? Hawk, oh, it's only Pig Will and Pig Won't. Good. I thought there was a traffic jam because I closed the road. I bet you closed the road to repave it, huh, Mr. Cobblestone? That's right, Sally. I don't want cars and trucks driving on the fresh asphalt until it gets nice and hard. Bicycles are okay, though. They're not heavy. Yippee! Let's roll! We've got a bike horn to buy! You mean a bike bell! No, bell. A horn! Horn! Bell! Horn! Bell! Horn! Now back to our mystery. Well, since there's nothing sharp on the bridge, maybe the tires got flat somewhere after the bridge. But it would have to be somewhere pretty close to the bridge. 
Everyone said they noticed their flat tires soon after they crossed. Well, we came from that direction before, so maybe we should go this way to see if there's anything sharp on the road. Good idea! Bye, Mr. Cobblestone! So long, kids! Happy driving! Hmm. Still no flat tires. It looks like we've hit a dead end. I told you we shouldn't go this way, Pigwell. No, you didn't. What happened, guys? We were minding our own beeswax, riding on the nice, newly paved road, and... We got two flat tires! Flat tires? That's great! Um, what's so great about that? Because your flat tires prove that whatever punctured them must be somewhere on the closed road. Mr. Cobblestone said he closed the road and only bikes could use it. Remember? Right. That must be why none of the cars we've seen have flat tires, but all the bikes do. Good thinking, team. Now we just need to find what is puncturing all the bike tires. Let's walk back along this closed road and look for something sharp and pointy. Hi, Sawdust! Hi, kids! Uh, I don't see anything sharp or pointy on the road, Huckle. There's something shiny on the road. Maybe it's glass. Sharp glass. It's only a coin. Someone must have dropped it here when the asphalt was still soft. And now that the asphalt is hard, it's stuck. Do you think this coin could have punctured the bike tires, Huckle? I doubt it, Loli. Coins are round and smooth, not sharp and pointy. What could have punctured all those bike tires? And why can't we see it? Beats me. Sawdust is making so much noise sawing, I can't even think. That gives me an idea. Sawdust is a carpenter. He must have nails. Yeah, nails are sharp and pointy. Let's go ask if he dropped any nails while he was working. Hi, Sawdust. Did you drop any nails while you were hammering today? Nope. I haven't hammered any nails yet today. But I will. I just bought a full bag of nails this morning. Did you see a full bag of nails, Sawdust? I sure did. Full right to the top. But this bag isn't full. It's half empty. Oopsie Daisy. I dropped some nails. That bag has a hole in it. Well, so it does. Hmm. Sawdust, where did you buy this bag of nails? Over there at that hardware store, right across the street. The asphalt was still really soft, so I had to dip me toe across it. You crossed the road with that bag of nails, and the asphalt was still really soft? Aha! I just solved this mystery! I hope you aren't too tired to tell us how you solved it, Huckle. Nope. Here's what I think happened. We knew that something was puncturing the bike tires somewhere around Busytown Bridge. We tested the bridge, but there was nothing sharp on it that was making tires go flat. Then we discovered that the tires were being punctured on the part of the road just past the bridge that was being paved, where bicycles could go, but not cars. That's why only bikes were getting flat tires. We couldn't see anything sharp on the road, but when we discovered that Sawdust had a hole in his bag of nails, I figured that nails must have fallen out of the bag onto the road when he tippy-toed across it. And I think the nails got stuck in the very soft asphalt, with just a bit of the pointy end sticking up. It sounds good, Huckle, but I don't see any nails. It would be hard to see the pointy ends of the nails without a magnifying glass. Aha! There they are! A whole line of them leading from the store to here. Mystery solved! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! There you have it, folks. Huckle and his team have done a really great job of solving the flat tire mystery. This is Goldbug signing off. <laughs> Oops, this just in. The Busy Town Action News fan has a flat tire. Sorry about that. Looks like I'd better pull out all these nails before Mr. Cobblestone opens up the road again. 
And don't worry, Goldbug. Not only are we great at solving mysteries, we're also great at changing flat tires. Right, team? Right. right. Yep, we'll have your tire changed in no time flat. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle unlocks a mystery. Sally, look, there's a new store opening in Busy Town. Let's go check it out. Wow, this furniture is so neat. This isn't just furniture, it's antique furniture. Excuse me, but what's an antique? An antique is something that is very old, <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these antiques are so great. Like this nifty old telescope. And look at this wacky lamp. Who are you calling wacky? Lolly! <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, just thought I'd light up your day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at all this cool stuff. That's what I was gonna say. What is this? It's an antique bread box. In the old days, folks used to keep their bread in boxes, like this. Wowee! Look at the size of that bread box. <laughs> That's not a bread box. It's what's called a roll-top desk. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of things to organize inside. Well, one thing's for sure. Mr. Dust needs a moving expert to help him organize this mess. Which is why I'm going to ask him if I can be in charge. No, I'm going to ask him if I can be in charge. No, I am. No, I'm going to ask. I'm asking. No, me. Me. No, me. Me. And me. I'm going to ask you guys if you want to go play baseball. Let's yeah. go. Hey, guys, look what I found. That's a big fancy key. I wonder what it unlocks. I don't know what this key unlocks, but I do know that it is... a mystery! This is Channel Action Bug News! Goldbug here, reporting live from downtown Busytown, where Huckle and his friends are keyed up for another exciting mystery. That's right, Goldbug. We just found a big golden key, and we're going to solve the mystery by finding out what this key unlocks. Okay. Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! Who, what, when, where, why, how? All together! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Huckle Cat, you and me! for important news updates as Huckle unlocks the mystery of the Golden Key. Goldbug out! Okay, Huckle, where should we start unlocking this mystery? Well, since keys unlock locks, we should start by looking for locks that need unlocking. Great! Let's drive around Busytown to see what locks we can find. The key doesn't fit this lock. Nope, not this one either. No luck here. Oh, what do we do now? There must be a gazillion locks in Busy Town. We can't try every one of them. You're right. We need a plan. Hmm. Who would know about keys? Hey! I remember once Dad went to the Busytown Key Store to get an extra set of keys made in case he lost them. I remember that too, Sally. The key store owner was called a locksmith. Oh, I bet a locksmith would know everything about locks and keys. Then what are we waiting for? To the locksmith! This key is very, very old. I haven't seen a key like this in... Well, never. Hey, then maybe we should try the Busytown Museum. 
That's where everything old in Busy Town is kept. Great idea, Hucko. Let's go. Thanks for your help, Mr. Bolt. No locks in the dinosaur room. Just a lot of hungry-looking dinos. <laughs> Nothing in the armor room either. Just knights wearing armor. We've been through every exhibit, but there are no locks. Yes, there are. Look! There's a lock on that treasure chest. Hmm. I was sure it would fit. Oh, looks like we need another plan. Okay, let's think now. Who else would know about old keys? Well, uh... Someone old might know. Yes, and someone old would have old things with old locks. Great idea, guys. And I know just who to ask. Mr. Gronkle is one of the oldest busy towners around. Oh, hello, children. I'm afraid I don't have time to chat today. I've lost all my keys. <gasps> really? That's great. Excuse me? What lonely means is that we found a key. Maybe it's one of the keys you lost. Well, it might be, but it's hard to tell just looking at it. Why don't you come in and see if it unlocks anything? Oh, boy. Look at all the old things with locks on them. I'm sure this old key will fit one of them. Well, that's the last of the locks. And our key didn't open anything. Fiddlesticks! I was sure that key would open something! Oh, that's where I put my keys. My problems are solved. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> Too bad we couldn't solve our problem. We still don't know what our key unlocks. Well, we can't give up. There has to be some lock in Busy Town that this key opens. But which one? We've driven all over Busy Town and can't find it. You're absolutely right, Loli. We've been all over town, but we haven't searched the one place the lock could be. Where? The place where we found the key. You're right. Maybe the lock is in the same place where the key was. There's only one way to find out. Back, Back to, to the, the antique, antique store. store. Hey, look. Almost all the furniture has been moved inside the store. Wow. I guess Pig Will and Pig Won't really are experts at organizing. You're right. But I wonder why they left this desk outside. I don't know, but it sure is pretty. <clears throat> I wonder what's inside. You can't open it. This bread box desk is broken. <laughs> I think Mr. Dust called it a roll top desk. Well, whatever it's called, it won't open. <laughs> See? Which is why I'm going to open it with this broom. I'm going to open it with this toilet plunger. No, you can't use those things. It's an antique. You'll ruin it. Sally is right. There must be another way to open it. OK, Huckle, stand back. Wait, I think I know what this key unlocks. <laughs> Goldbug here, reporting live from the antique store with an update. This is your key moment, Huckle. Did you solve the mystery? I think so, Goldbug. Here's how I figured it out. First, we found a key. So we drove all over Busy Town trying to unlock things. But there were too many locks. So we went to a locksmith, who's an expert with keys. And he told us that the key was old and would unlock something that was very old. So we went to the museum where old things are kept, but the key didn't unlock anything there. That's when we decided that someone old would have old things that an old key might open. So we visited Mr. Gronko, but our key didn't unlock anything there either. It wasn't until I saw Sally having trouble opening the old antique roll top desk that I noticed there was an old lock on it. I think that the key to the roll top desk fell out of the lock when the delivery men were carrying it and that the key we found unlocks this desk. There's only one way to be sure. It opened. 
Well, there you have it, folks. Huckle unlocked the mystery. Everybody all together solve the mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! This is Goldbug signing off. <laughs> desk. It's an antique treasure chest. And it's locked. Before we had a key, but no lock. Now we have a lock, but no key. Perhaps it's in here. I bet I know what's inside. I bet it's filled with antique bread. No, I bet it's filled with a hot Sunday with a cherry on top. Sorry, guys, you're both wrong. It's filled with lots of locks for all of Mr. Dust's keys. Oh? Huh? Locks was my second guess. No, it wasn't. It was mine. Why don't you children see how many keys fit the locks? That sounds wow. like fun. I get to try the first key. No, you don't. I do. No, I do. No, I do. I do. I do. The Messy Car Mystery. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, now I have a muddy car. <laughs> Our cars could sure use a bath, right, Lily? Right, Huckle. To the car wash. Aren't you forgetting something, Huckle? Your car doesn't have a roof. Who needs a roof? When an umbrella will do the trick. See you after the rainstorm. <laughs> Hi there. Do you mind if I go ahead of you? I'm in a bit of a rush and I can't do my deliveries with my truck looking this muddy. Be my guest. Thank you. Whoa! The buffing brush is pulling my umbrella. I've got to get a picture of this. Wow, that was quite a car wash. But it was worth it. My car is sparkling clean. There it goes again. <laughs> that buffer brush needs to calm down. Bath time, Apple Car. Here we go. Mmm. This pineapple sundae is delicious. Shoo! Oh, get some for me. Shoo! Oh, no. Why are they bothering us? <laughs> because bees like things that are sweet. That's why. I guess we are pretty sweet, aren't we, Pigwall? <laughs> no, not you. The sweet Sunday. Oh, well then. Here, you hold it. No, you hold it. You hold it. You hold it. Uh-uh, you... Whoops! <laughs> he did it! Next time, let's pick a flavor that bees don't like. Well, how does my apple car look? Nice and shiny? You bet. Shiny enough to eat, except there's a worm in it. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. Mud? Not again. Where does it come from? Yeah, you just came from the car wash. Your car should be spotless. Did you drive through another mud puddle? Hmm, I don't think so. So. There's a mess on Loli's car, and we don't know where it came from. That can only mean one thing. A mystery! This, this is Generation Bug, Bug News! News. <laughs> Goldbug here, getting the dirt on the latest Busy Town News story. Huckle, what can you tell our viewers? Well, Goldbug, Loli just got his car washed, and now he has some mud dripping down from his roof. Mud on his roof? 
That's a messy situation. How did it get there? That's what we're going to find out. Right, team? Yay! Yay! Ready for it? Here goes! <laughs> as Huckle and his pals scour Busy Town for clues as they try to solve the messy car mystery. And that's the buzz in Busy Town. Go, Bug. Out. Since the mud is on top of Loli's car, it must have dripped from above. From above? How could that happen? I know. We went through that underpass. Maybe mud dripped down from the road up above. Good thinking, Sally. Let's check it out. Hey, what are these bees doing around my car? Shoo, little guys. Maybe they think your car is a big candy apple. It's not a candy apple. That's my car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see any mud dripping down, Sally. Me neither. Then the mud on Loli's car must have come from somewhere else. Let's keep looking. Go away, bees. Leave us alone. Uh, oh. Bees must like raspberry sundaes even more than pineapple ones. No way they're getting this sundae. There, let's see them try to get it now. Look, they're going away. Except for that one. Shoo, little bee. Go join your friends. Ah, that's cold. Back to the ice cream shop we go. Come on, we need to look for more clues. Look. Digger has mud in its bucket. Oh, the digger just got mud on my car. Maybe the same thing happened to Loli's car, and that's how the mud got on his roof. Shoo now, shoo! These bees sure do like mud. That's strange. Mud isn't sweet, and I thought bees only liked sweet things. And something else is strange. The bees are only buzzing around the mud on Loli's car, and not mine. Mm -hmm. The mud on Loli's car is darker and stickier. You can't bother us now, bees. Pig will? Pig won't? Is that you? Yup. In person. What are you wearing? Beekeeper's hats. We really tricked those bees this time. Ah, uh, Pig will. Our Sunday is outside and we're stuck inside. Listen, do you hear bees laughing? <laughs> yep. Uh huh. The bees win again. <laughs> hey, that's interesting. The mud on Loli's car is exactly the same color as the chocolate sauce on your Sunday. And it smells like chocolate. That's not mud on your car, Loli. It's chocolate sauce. <laughs> No wonder the bees like it. But how did chocolate sauce get on Lily's car? That's what we need to find out. Hey, look at that taxi cab. It has chocolate sauce dripping down its roof, too. Maybe the taxi driver knows where it came from. Come on, team. Shoo! Shoo! Excuse us, sir. Hello, kids. What can I do for you? Do you know how that chocolate sauce got on your car? That's chocolate sauce? I thought it was mud. No wonder the bees won't leave me alone. So you don't know how it got there? I don't have a clue. And I just cleaned my taxi at the car wash. Hmm, that's interesting. Loli was also at the car wash today. And he got chocolate sauce on his car, too. Do you think the chocolate sauce came from the car wash? That's what we need to find out. To the car wash! Back so soon? Actually, we think Loli's car got chocolate sauce on it when he was here. Can we take a look inside? Sure, come on. It's shut off right now. The buffer brush has been acting up. Look, there's a puddle on the floor. And it looks like a chocolate sauce puddle. It is chocolate sauce. 
How did that get there? It must have dripped from above. That would explain how it got on the roof of the taxi and on your apple car, Loli. But I don't see any chocolate sauce up there. Me neither. Hmm. If it did drip from above, why didn't my car get chocolate sauce on it too? I know why. You're under an umbrella, Huckle. Oh, so the chocolate sauce must have landed on the umbrella. Right, Loli. Huh? There's no chocolate sauce on it. Sally, you took some pictures when we went through the car wash, didn't you? Yeah, because it looked funny when the buffer brush kept pulling on things. Can I have a look at those pictures, please? Sure. I think I've solved the messy car mystery. So, Huckle, can you steer us any closer to where the muck on Loli's car came from? I sure can. Here's what I think happened. Loli got his car washed, and even though it should have been clean, there was something mucky on its roof. The muck on Loli's car was darker and stickier than mud. That's when we realized it wasn't mud, it was chocolate sauce. Then we saw the taxi cab also had chocolate sauce on its roof. And just like Loli, it had gone through the car wash too. When we went to the car wash, we saw chocolate sauce on the ground. Then I remembered the buffer brush had been pulling things out of the cars when we were there, including the truck carrying bottles of chocolate sauce in front of Loli. So I think that one of the chocolate sauce bottles got caught in the buffer brush and dribbled chocolate on all the cars that came through after that, including Loli's apple car and the taxi cab. Let's find out if you're right. Can you give me a boost, sir? Sure thing. Heads up. It's chocolate sauce, all right. Just like Huckle said. Well, there you have it, folks. It looks like Huckle and his team have solved the messy car mystery. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Huckle! While I'm here, I should clean that chocolate sauce off my car. Wow, look at that. My car's already clean. Uh, is anything wrong? Yeah, why are you staring at us? 